Hey, welcome to CNC Machinist Made Easy, where you can learn how to be a machinist right here online. As crazy as it sounds, we're going to start step by step here. We're moving along with these videos, and tonight I want to do feeds and speeds. It may be a part one of a, several parts of feeds and speeds because there's a lot to it. Um, feeds and speeds are something that we need to understand is how fast you're going to run your tool, uh, how rigid it is. A little tiny tool, you're going to try to make a slot in a piece of steel, you're going to have to run it a little bit different than you would run a big tool. Um, and remember, uh, something that you always want to remember is you have different circumstances in machining. It's called setup. And it takes a while to acquire these different, the understanding, but a lot of it is common sense. Rigidity is a word that you're going to want to remember. What rigidity means is how solid it's clamped down. I used to have a, I had a guy come in my shop one time and he saw me drilling, I don't know, it was by a one inch hole through steel and that was just nice and quiet and the chips were coming out and breaking off. And he looked at that and he goes, I, I, can I use that drill? I, I, maybe it was a five eighths drill. He goes, I got to drill a hole at home on a piece of steel. He goes, that's a nice drill. I said to him, I said, you know, that's really uh, a nice drill. I said, but the majority of the credit is because of the rigid machine. When you take them, them thousand, two thousand pound heads and you come down like that and they're so tight, that is a huge part of how them drills and how them end mills can cut so smooth. It's rigid, it's tight, it's big weight behind it. It doesn't, when you're standing there trying to drill with your hand, I said, you're not going to drill like that. He, he didn't believe me. He says, I just, just let's let me borrow the drill. I let him borrow it. He comes back a few days later, the drill's all chipped up. He goes, it didn't work so good for me. And I thought, of course it didn't because your arm isn't as rigid as these big machine heads. So rigidity is a big word, and this is kind of what I mean by it. You see that right there? That's the rigidity. You see how that piece is in that solid vise like that? That's rigid. That's when you can really take a nice big bite at that, and them, and them inserts or them flutes are going to come and swipe that nice and clean like that. And you don't have to watch it. You don't have to be so careful with the feeds and speeds. Now look at this is a little bit different. We have clamping methods. You know, when machining, creativity is a huge thing. You have to be able to be creative. You have to be able to think of creative ways to do it. Maybe to beat your opponent or have the cutting edge. Now something like this is it's it's not as rigid as that prior one right there. See? So now you're thinking to yourself, well, maybe I can't push it as hard, you know? Then you can get something like take a look at this lathe one. You got that piece sticking away out like that. You're not gonna be able to take big bites on that like you would if that was chucked right up against that chuck like that. All of these things need to be taken into consideration when you're machining. Rigid, rigidity is a big part of it, and that can sometimes determine and adjust feeds and speeds. Different types of tools can adjust feeds and speeds. When they engineer these tools, they run them at certain feeds and speeds, and they use formulas to do it. And depending on your setup, depending on what you're running, depending on the tool, the size of the tool, the sky's the limit. Now look at this one. You see that? He's got to set that. Look at that nice little creative piece right there. He can take that, set that on there, and he just, he's got, he's got to be very careful. That piece might, he, he's got it in there pretty good, but you, you don't always apply the same rule. You're thinking, now oh, look at that, that's loose in there. I might want to run this a little bit different or change that. And them things are acquired over time. That's where you come with the uh, experience and the skill, the guys. They know how these pieces move. A nice part in the old days when all of us ran in a manual mills like that, you could feel that end mill when you're cranking it. You could feel that drill when you're cranking it. And it gave you a really good idea what that pre what that machine is under. Nowadays, a lot of these guys, they're just looking at gauges and watching their loads. And uh, I just, I find myself fortunate to be able to have that time where I can run it and I can, I know what that machine can be doing a lot of times. Uh, when it's CNC, that machine might have a ton of power behind it and you don't know it. One of the big uh, uh, formulas they use is called surface feet per minute. Surface speed per minute is what most everyone uses to calculate how fast they'll run a tool, how much material they ta they'll take off. And that actually is the definition of surface footage. It's a formula used to determine the amount of material being removed from a certain, at a, for a certain period of time. And the reason they use this, it is, it is used to keep this load of the tool equal when changing diameters. I'm not going to get into that particular formula today, but it is exactly how much material is being removed at one period of time. If I take a chip load, what a chip load is, here this might be the next one, the term chip load is a very popular term just like rigidity and different setups. Chip load is something, if you have a drill with two flutes on it and you're drilling it and I'll put it, and the chip load is the load that is put on that chip and it's calculated by 
the amount of material each tooth is removing every rotation. And you can see that right there. There's the byproduct of a chip load. If you were to take a little micrometer or, or uh, calipers and you were to put that on and see how thick one it, that, that is, that would have been the chip load that you were pushing that machine when you were drilling that hole. And you try to take, and everything is by thousands. So when you're drilling down, you know, it's all formulated. This little eighth inch drill, it's only gonna be able to take maybe you know, a 1,000 chip load would be normal, depending again, some of these modern day high performance tools will surprise you. But you know, that might take a 1,000 chip load. That means about the human hair split in half, and that's about how many, it's just spinning so fast, but zzz, 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 it's cutting through there. Whereas if I take a one inch drill, I could probably take a seven, eight, nine thousand chip load because it's so big and it's just peeling a big chip off. If I try to do that with a small drill, it would bust immediately. So that's why you use surface peat. That's why you use this term right here, surface uh, feet per minute, because it'll, it'll, it'll take into consideration the diameter of that tool and the chip load that it's able to take when it's removing material. And there's a chip, there's a flute on an end mill right there. You see that right there? Now, uh, what an end mill is, it's a, it almost looks like a drill, except it can cut on the side, and that's where you're cutting your your slabs and your profiles and your slots and such like that. It's, it's just similar to a drill. It's very sharp. Nowadays, they have high performance tooling. It's, it's just amazing what some of that stuff will do. Some of them things are center cutting. Uh, I see it don't look like this one is, but um, the, some of the technology they have today, these end mills and the things they can do, but there's a flute right there on one of them. You'll take, we'll get into that in the next few videos. We'll get in maybe touch on surface feet again and uh, they use the formula what they use. And everybody says, why this, why that? Well, when they have different types of materials that they're playing with nowadays with the technology, I mean, you can really push that surface footage. Um, the higher the surface footage, the more you're pushing that drill. The higher that chip load, the more you're pushing that drill or that uh, end mill. And nowadays they can, uh, you know, depending on what type of material you're cutting, they'll say use um, 80 surface footage or 1,000 surface footage. And to just to make a long story short, if they tell me 80 surface footage, you always take the 80 times, well, some people say 3.82, but just to make it easy, say times four, and then you divide that by the di diameter and it'll give you your feeds and it'll give you your speeds. It'll give you, and then you can plug in your desired chip load, which you acquire over time. And you can have your simple feed and speed right on the fly there. I have cheat notes for that, but uh, that's a that's a that's a, a, a topic of another day. So thanks for watching. This is feeds and speeds. Uh, like again, I'll get into it a little bit more, but uh, uh, keep on keeping on. And thanks for watching. CNC machinist made easy.